Okay, let's get started. We have a lot of materials to cover today. Uh, my name is Ken Liang. I've been doing mechanical testing of data center hardware at Google for 14 years. And I'm here to talk to you about our work in the random vibration testing of fully populated racks. The era of AI have introduced significant complexity and miniaturization to the DC hardware. These products are developed faster than ever before, and that makes our job very, very hard. L11 manufacturing is the key to development to velocity. For those of you who are not familiar with the term, it's the idea that fully populated racks are assembled, brought up, tested, transported, and installed at the data center as an integrated solution. Make things a lot simpler on the supply chain side of things, but a lot harder for mechanical testing. If we put our engineer's hat back on, the movement of these masses and material across the world introduces compression and tension down to the board, component, and molecular level. And the storing and releasing of strain energy is what causes fracture and ultimately uh, intermittent and complete failure at, in production. What's important about fully populated racks is that every layer of the system matters. The components, the machines, the racks, the packaging, down to external factors like vehicle types and road conditions. And taking a step back, mechanical testing is still very much in the state of technology islands, and that makes it very hard to collaborate, retain knowledge, and to scale our work across the ecosystem. I'm here to talk to you about the methodology we developed at Google to tackle these challenges. One of the most important lessons from decades of shock testing is the idea that fracture can happen at the component level, but your unit could turn on and pass functional tests afterward. You try to look through the circuit after testing, but you can't find anything because everything is back to neutral position and in contact again. What's different about vibration is that these kind of damages accumulate over time, and the lower the magnitude, the longer the period. And if your stress is variable, it takes even more work to figure out how fast they accumulate. At the end of the day, it's still very much a classical story of strength versus stress. So you want to be able to explain both sides easily and clearly. If you think about the dim damages that could accumulate inside a rack over time from the manufacturer to onto the trucks, traveling countries and continents to the data center, um, and all the loading and unloading and impacts in between, you want to demonstrate that it takes many more times of that stress to break your system. You can express that in terms of factor of safety. So anything above one means you have margin, and anything below, less. Now these numbers are specific for components, machines, racks, and packaging because all of these factors influence these numbers in some way. And of course, different kind of roads and routes, different kind of numbers too. You want these kind of numbers for your whole fleet so that you can prioritize your time and resources on the ones most easily to break. We can't test everything every single time. And it would be so helpful to my job if I had these kind of numbers for most common electronic components across the ecosystem. That's a very high level overview of where we want to go. Let's talk about the capabilities we developed to help us get there on a day-to-day -day basis. First thing you had to learn was field measurements. Each of these modules are capable of recording 3,000 samples a second for 10 hours straight. And once we learn how to use a lot of these together, we send them everywhere. On trucks, packaging, racks, crates, and we've collected two billion data points so far and counting. We had to learn how to test our products correctly. Now you could play these recording directly on the shaker tables, but you can be testing these things for days, if not longer. So we had to learn how to break down the data down to the fundamental frequencies, amplitudes, and cycles, 
and create a customized profile for each specific product. We have to learn how to look inside the machine. The video you saw earlier today showing tremendous movement around the heat sinks, around the fan modules, around the memory. Everything is moving when it's under vibration. We did extensive strain measurements. So on the left, we have a very large server with a lot of heat sinks, and we pick some critical components to monitor strains around. On the right, we have a tiny compact server, and we pack the area around the heat sink full of strain gauges just to understand the curvature around you know, when it happens during resonance. We did displacement measurements of the same units on the right, on the left, you can see the heat sinks moving in their own ways, each of them. And on the right, you can see the movement and the curvature of the chip in the middle under the white area and the boards around. We had to learn how to look inside the machines into the components. And at that level, you can see mechanical damage accumulating over time. Measurements like these help us understand how our machines are behaving during testing and in the real world. They help us identify strength, uh, the strength of your system, and the stress and the location and the amplitude and the direction. Let's take a look at an example. We have the compact server from earlier. We tested multiple samples of these to different levels of stress until failure. We did extensive measurements in racks and in packaging. We combed through all the field data for specific frequencies and magnitude of stress that could lead to damages. And we did our uh, calculations. These are the results we get. Um, in the US, in road number one, a factor of safety of 1.5. This is one of the worst roads we recorded in the US. Numbers are better in road number two factor of safety of 18 because the road is a lot calmer. So there's less vibration going through the system into the components. In EU, a factor of safety of nine for road number three, but notice it's only for 45 minutes. These kind of movements are on little trucks that moves between the warehouses and the data center for local. So you don't want to be using these kind of trucks for a long haul shipping across the continents. Um, Numbers a lot better on road number four, 7.5 over five days. If you look at the numbers below, these are numbers calculated based on shipping of these units in traditional packaging, in foam and cardboard boxes. What it's really telling you is that the foam has absorbed the vibration and your unit just isn't getting stressed. So the numbers are just way up. I want to take a tap step back and talk about the idea of technology islands again. Um, 14 years ago when I first started, I tested black boxes with industry standard and we had to reinvent random vibration testing from scratch. Not everybody can afford to do that. Tech islands are unsustainable in the long term. If you think about the era of AI where everything is built around critical components, around a specific chip, memory, interconnect, we all have to build products around them and do our own testing. But if you think about it, we're all basically doing the same thing. The worst part about it is um, these kind of work very rarely leads to industry-wide improvement. It's like we're trying to reinvent the wheel every single time. I know we can do so much better than that. Um, a lot of these problems take in deep industry engagement and communication and collaboration to solve, but we thought we would push the work a little bit forward and do our part. We're going to open source the random vibration testing of off-the-shelf data center hardware using off-the-shelf solutions and methodologies. Everything we talked about today is going to be written up in simple white papers available through the project's GitHub repository. Uh, sample data, test setups are going to be shared so everyone can try it for themselves. We're hoping that this would create a platform for future collaborations and communication. 
Just one last thought before we go. The era of AI is changing the world rapidly. It's going beyond the data centers, our homes and offices, to power edge computing, autonomous vehicles, and robotics. In the real world, um, the components are going to see a lot of higher mechanical and thermally induced stress. And think about it, the components you guys are building today for the data centers could very well be used to power these things in the future. And when that happens, you're going to want state-of-the-art field measurements, modal analysis, fatigue analysis. And so think about it as a reason to become interested in the project. It's going to take some time to upload all this information. So we're targeting for February of 2025. Um, it will be uploaded to this link right here in the GitHub link. And in the meantime, reach out to this alias. Um, share your story, pain points, your ideas, your methods, and I'll take some questions. Thanks for all the work on uh, shipping related vibes. Is there any such effort on operational vibration as well? If you think about this, this is what happens at the physical layer. So when there's damages at the physical layer, you could still be passing in functional tests. So what I've done, I've been testing things as if it's an operational vibration test the whole time, whether it's operational bench level, rack level, transportation. These things, everything would tell you something about the system. You could have your machines just reboot, and that could show that there's some kind of intermittency in the connectors or down to your chips or whatever. Right, so we try to do everything we can to learn about these systems. Understood. Sorry, I was asking about damage accumulated due to vibration due to like just being in the cabinet for 10 to 15 something years. Yeah, the thing is, the operational vibration in the data center are pretty low. So a lot of times, you're not going to break anything. What likely happened is that somewhere during shipment, your solder joints have broken apart again or halfway through it. And by the time at the data center, heat, um, just general operational vibe, things over time, things just deteriorate, right? So it takes time to deep dive into each little component and figure out exactly how long they grow. But I have tested many things in the lab and I couldn't break anything. And then people would email me saying, and the data center were failing by massive numbers, what's going on? And so both sides of the testing and what happens in the real world have to actually come back and it might actually shock you that how hard we have to test these uh, units and components, right? But that's just reality. Sweet, thank you. Because there's so many OSVs and vendors building different types of servers and form factors, um, what is your ideas for sharing the, the data, the, like the shock and vibe data? Is it at the server level or what's observed across many different platforms or is it lower at the PCBA level, a component level, in order to be able to make meaningful decisions for future platforms? Yeah, I think everything. Um, if you look at it, the component level is where things break, but what we have right now is a disconnect between the component maker and the system maker and the rack makers, right? So you have to be able to explain stress at this level and how that translates to why the, you know, where the board is moving to cause these damages and that that translates to when it's inside the rack, how the rack movement causes these and then back to packaging. So we're gonna have to have a lot of data and we need a lot of collaboration for everybody so that we can find our way towards standardization. Right now I can tell you that if I can do measurements at the component level, we can probably create some kind of specs that says when you ship it in this system, you cannot exceed this kind of level of strain or acceleration and so forth for port deflection, right? But we got to work our way there one step at a time. Okay, uh, please come by the Google booth. I'll be hanging around there all day and uh, hope to talk to you in person and hope to hear from you um, through email.